Hi everyone, and welcome to this video on Zones and Zone Axes of Crystals. Today, we'll delve into these fundamental concepts in crystallography, which is the study of crystals and their structures. Let's take a look at the image on the screen. This figure depicts a quartz crystal, a commonly studied crystal. Here, we can see several faces and edges. Notice the edges highlighted in blue, they are parallel to each other. These edges, along with the faces, together form a zone. So, we can say that, a zone is a group of crystal faces, that intersect in parallel edges. Now that we understand zones, let's introduce the concept of a zone axis. Within a crystal, we can imagine a line that runs parallel to all the parallel edges belonging to a specific zone. This imaginary line is the zone axis. It acts as a reference point for the zone, representing the direction of all those parallel edges. Going back to our quartz crystal example, the blue edges are all parallel to the vertical line labeled C+. This line represents the zone axis in this case. The faces and edges that share this parallel alignment form a zone and the C plus line acts as their unifying reference point. It's important to remember that crystals can have numerous zones and zone axes. The number of zones and axes present depends on the crystal's structure and symmetry. In our quartz crystal example, there could potentially be more zones beyond the one we have identified. For instance, imagine a horizontal plane passing through the middle of the crystal, intersecting the vertical axis, C+, and some of the faces. The edges formed by this intersection would create another zone with a different zone axis perpendicular to the C+, axis. Zone axes are often denoted using Miller indices. These are a set of numbers that represent the axis's intercepts with the crystal's unit cell axes. The unit cell is the fundamental building block of a crystal structure. Miller indices express the reciprocals of these intercepts. We shall discuss about the Miller indices in the next video. It's an important concept in crystallography. We can use a zone symbol to represent the relationship between a zone and a specific face within that zone. The zone symbol combines two parts. The first part is the notation for the zone axis, using Miller indices. The second part is the notation for the crystal face. For instance, if the zone axis is denoted by 100 and the crystal face by 100, the zone symbol would be represented in this manner. This indicates that the face 100 belongs to the zone that has the 100 axis as its reference. Zones and zone axes are crucial for understanding several aspects of crystals. By analyzing the zones and zone axes, we can gain valuable insights into the crystal's symmetry. The presence of multiple zones and axes reflects the symmetrical arrangement of faces within the crystal. For example, a crystal with a cubic structure will have multiple zones and axes, reflecting its high symmetry, while a crystal with a lower symmetry will have fewer zones and axes. The zones and zone axes can influence the physical and chemical properties of a crystal. For example, the ease with which a crystal can be cleaved or fractured is often related to the zones and zone axes. Cleavage planes are typically parallel to zones, and the direction of cleavage is often related to the zone axis. Finally, understanding zones and zone axes is essential for determining the crystal's structure. The arrangement of zones and axes provides clues about the organization of atoms within the crystal lattice. By analyzing the zones and zone axes, scientists can determine the unit cell parameters and the arrangement of atoms within the unit cell. In conclusion, zones and zone axes are fundamental concepts in crystallography. They help us understand the way faces are arranged in crystals providing valuable insights into crystal symmetry, properties, and structure. As we delve deeper into crystallography, understanding zones and zone axes becomes increasingly important.